good morning, C3 Trace Cities. How's everybody doing? All right, welcome our online people and maybe some folks over in the other venue. We're so glad that you're here. Hey, my name is Scott. Um, I'm one of the pastors here on staff. And uh, yes, I am the guy that got hurt uh, a couple months ago. Um, Doug mentioned that. And so I'm having some trouble with my arm. And uh, I went into the doctor's office in, uh, um, I don't know, last week sometime. And uh, she, you know, asked around. She's like, hey, well, what, what happened? And were you in an automobile accident? I don't know. It was sports. Well, what sport were you playing? And I said, soccer. And she said, do you still play soccer? <laughs> and I was like, hmm, I don't know. I keep hearing this over and over. My wife's been probably saying this for a couple of years now. She keeps telling me that maybe I should slow down a little bit. I keep getting hurt, you know, ankles, split open head, whatever, surgery on my thumb, you know, what, all this stuff because of sports. And I don't know. I'm slow learner. Um, but uh, speaking of my wife, she's just been an angel through this whole thing. Uh, she has really taken care of me and come alongside me. And uh, she doesn't get enough credit for what she does, which I'm sure a lot of moms feel that way sometimes. So this is a shout out to her. She, her and my kids are up in Silverwood. Now, I know Silverwood doesn't open until 11. Um, and so she should have watched last service, right? Um, but, right? Because that's what you guys do when you go on vacation, right? You guys go off and you go, oh, still got to watch service. Well, you guys don't. Yeah, none of you do that. Um, anyway, um, so maybe she watched. And so I just had to say this so that you guys are my witnesses that I said, I appreciate you. I love you, honey. So, um, yeah. So she was, she's been really good. Um, and so uh, this is the last of a series of messages called The Greatness Principle. And um, if you were here for the first message, Mark defined the greatness principle as this. He said, the greatness principle is when you bless others, God blesses you. So when you bless others, God blesses you. And I think that's so true. This series is all about serving. And we've even set up a board out in the lobby uh, I don't know if you've seen it. It's got serving opportunities outside of C3, but it's also got serving opportunities inside of C3. And the cool thing about it is there's a lot more other opportunities out there, like during the week and things like that, but we just don't have enough room on the board. Um, and so if you get a chance, go check that out. Uh, they're simple things. They're, uh, some are more time consuming. Some of them are way less. And so make sure to check that out. And you get to, if you sign up today, um, you get to hit a gong. You get to smack this gong. So that's supposed to be in celebration, but it's also the most obnoxious sound. <laughs> Have you seen? <laughs> this just came to my mind. Um, I didn't say this first hour, but dumb and dumber, you know? Um, ah! Like, I don't know. It's like the most obnoxious sound you can think of. That's the gong. Um, and so, uh, so, but it is really good, a celebration. So if you hear it, Give a little shout out. Yeah, somebody, somebody joined up, you know. They want, they want to help out. So um, serving is the guiding principle in Jesus' life and should be in ours. Um, so I am going to wrap this series up with three words, three simple words, three passages, and three really simple questions that you need to ask yourself today um, or throughout the week. And I'm not going to promise clarity um, but would encourage you to wrestle with what's said today and figure out where you are at in this family that we call C3 uh, because I think it's really important. Uh, would you pray with me real quick before we get started? Father God, we just want to thank you so much for what you've done, what you continue to do in our lives. God, we are so blessed and we just want to recognize that. We want to be obedient to you as we walk with you on this journey we call life and then walk with you even further into this eternal life that we've claimed. And God, we love you. We thank you. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. All right, cool. Well, we're going to jump in. The first word is remember. Remember. I don't know about you, but I have a really hard time remembering, especially people's names. I know I'm a pastor, right? That should be like the thing that I remember. But I will see somebody and I'll be like, ah, and it just blank, right? And then like maybe in the morning I see that person and then by the afternoon I'll shout out 
Julie. And I'll be like, and they'll be like, what? What are you doing? And I say, oh, I just remembered a name that I should have known like five hours ago. Um, but I've been thinking about it, right? And it's kind of like your homes. I've lived in a lot of different homes in my life. Um, and I couldn't tell you the address of any of them. Um, I can tell you to my current address. So that's good, right? I know how to get home. Um, I do remember that. But I guarantee if I move, it won't be too long that I will forget this address. And I don't know why. I remember moments at these homes, right? Like falling off my roof, putting on Christmas lights. Um, I remember hearing the story. I wasn't there for it, but it was a great story. My kids caught a porcupine underneath our deck. Um, Yeah, he was, well, he was in their clubhouse. So they went to play and, you know, there's a porcupine, so we got to catch him. So they put him in a garbage can. I don't know how they did it. It's pretty impressive, actually, because they were little. Um, and then they set him free somewhere else. Um, I remember the hospitals my kids were uh, born in. Uh, so there's those key moments, right, that you can recall because of maybe it's a traumatic experience. or And, and then when you get the facts all wrong, my wife tells me all the time. So anything I say up here, I could be all wrong. But it's the way I remember it, right? And so it's funny because whenever I'm talking to anybody and I'm like, hey, this is how this went. She's like, no, it's not. And I'm like, oh, well, it sounded really good. But um, yeah, so she, she keeps me straight. Um, I don't know the facts. I don't know. I don't know that they matter too much. But, um, uh, but I was, I was kind of going back and trying to remember some things and I came across this, this tape. Um, yeah, it's all broken. Um, and most of you might think of, when you see a tape like this, you think of a mixtape, right? Back in the day, how many of you made mixtapes? Anybody? Yeah? Yeah. Kids, if you don't know what that is, ask your parents. Um, but uh, I never got one. Oh, sad. Uh, but my sister got a lot of them, right? These boys would make her mixtapes, and I always thought it was kind of corny. I was like, I'm not taking the time to make a tape. You know how much time that takes? You can listen to the radio and you're like, pause, record. Oh, missed it. Now you got to wait for it to come back around. Oh, and then somebody will walk in the door. Hey, and you're like, I'm recording. Uh, ruins your whole tape, right? Oh, yeah. What a waste of time. But, uh, but this tape, um, this was from our wedding. Uh, a friend of mine wrote us a song and then sang this song at our wedding and then um, recorded it on this tape for us. So I don't even know what the song is. I couldn't tell you. But, (laughs) yeah, memories, memories. Um, But every time I see this tape, it reminds me of my wedding day. And so I keep it um, in my drawer uh, at my bedside, and and it just brings back those good memories. Because sometimes, you know, marriages are tough, right? Relationships are tough. And we need something to keep us uh, grounded, to remember those moments, right? So you go back and you kind of remember, to, after 25 years, you, you know, I get it all wrong. I, mean, I don't know what's going on, but, um, but we got to remember. And the passage we're going to jump into today, uh, one of the three is Revelation 2, 2 through 5. So the very back of your Bible, if you have your app, uh, you can follow along, or maybe you have your actual paper Bible, um, But we're going to jump in there. And this was a letter written from John. Uh, He got a vision from an angel uh, to seven different churches on the island of Patmos. And he is uh, relaying this message to these churches. And this is what he says to the first church. He says, he says, I know your works, your toil and your patient endurance and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and found them to be false. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not grown weary. So this is all good. This is sounding great, right? It's like, oh my gosh, this is a good thing. Like he's saying, hey, your deeds, spot on. I mean, you guys are serving each other. You guys are doing great things. He's like, you're, you're disciplined. Oh, you're disciplined. You wake up in the morning, you're doing your Bible study every morning, you're staying physically fit, you're, you're doing all the good things. You're disciplined, you have disciplined lifestyle, church. Uh, doctrine, you, you're sharing everything 
that I've told you to share, and it's spot on. You're even finding out the people that are false teachers. You're finding those people that don't spread the true doctrine, and you're testing it and approving it, and your determination. Oh, who can? I mean, think about today, those people that are still going to church. You got, you're determined. You're waiting patiently. There's so much going on in the world, and you're patient. And then he says this. He says, but... And this is a big but, all right? Uh, the, the Greek word here is Allah, and it is emphatic. It is like, there's not a good English translation from the Greek, right? It, but it's, it's but, like, like, nevertheless, on the contrary, right? He says, I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you have had at first. And then he says, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove the lampstand from its place unless you repent. So what he's saying is that you can do all these things. Great at your deeds, your discipline, your doctrine, your determination. Those are all spot on. You're doing great. But without love, Actually, in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, without love, you're just a resounding gong. You're an obnoxious noise. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? You've got everything right in your life. Like, you, you actually look good on paper, you know? It's like, oh, they're, they're a strong believer. But if you don't have love, he's got this against you, right? And we've got to remember that, that it, is, it starts there. It starts with love. That's the first thing that we've got to do. Um, And love in our language, you know, I mean, it's so confusing what love means anymore um, because it's, and I don't know where you're at with masks. You know, some people say, well, if you love, then you would wear a mask or you won't wear a mask. You know, there's so many things, so many different definitions in this world. I would, I would encourage you to find out what love is and the definition and look in your Bible, right? That's where I would get the definition of love. Because if somebody wants me to wear a mask, I'll wear a mask. No problem. Right? No big deal. Um, and so we've, we've just got to do that. Right? We've got to do that as people, as, as Christ followers. But I want to say this. Affection or love determines the effectiveness of action. Let me say that one more time. Affection or love determines the effectiveness of of our action, and maybe um, you've experienced this, guys. I'm speaking to guys. This is my what I think of um, on maybe Valentine's Day. You know, Valentine's Day comes around, and you forget. I mean, do you know February 14th is every is Valentine's Day every 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 year? Um, so <laughs> I've forgotten though. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, tomorrow. It's Valentine's Day. So you hurry up and you go get a card and you write something on it. You're like, here. Like, does that suffice? Is that, was that very thoughtful? Um, now, if I took a couple days and I planned it and I've got a reservation, I've uh, got candles, I've done something else, something bigger, do you think it's more effective? Yes. You guys should always say Yes. Yes. Affection determines the effectiveness of our action. So when we show love, it is more effective. So the simple question is, do you remember? And do you remember what it was like when you first became a Christ follower, for those of you that have accepted that? I do. I remember um, I was in high school. Um, I was a jerk in uh, middle school, high school, and I don't know, but I was invited to this play, and I maybe have shared this before, but I've been, in, I was invited to this play, and I don't know even why I went, uh, because I don't go to plays, um, I don't do that, uh, unless my, my daughter was in a few plays, I went to those, um, but uh, I happened to be at this play, there was probably a girl involved, I don't know, um, but I remember sitting in the very top of the balcony, and I had some Skittles, and I started off throwing them at people, right? You'd throw, oh, you know, it was kind of funny. Um, 
And uh, as the play got going, I started to really kind of pay attention. It was called No Greater Love. And I don't even know how they got into the school. Um, it's interesting to me, but, uh, but I'm glad they did because they gave the altar call. And during, during this um, uh, play, I noticed that there was one of the actors down there, and his name was Tyrone, right? Um, I didn't like Tyrone. I hated Tyrone. Actually, I, I told him that I was going to beat him up. Um, and I'm, okay, I am uh, uh, probably 100 pounds on a good day um, in high school. I wrestled 101. Um, and so I was 100 pounds, and I'm like wanting to fight everybody, right? I had some anger issues. But, um, uh, but I wanted to beat up Tyrone, right? And now I'm watching this play, and he's talking about Jesus, and uh, they have this altar call, and, and I went forward. I went forward and accepted, accepted Jesus into my life, and I'm sitting there, and they're praying, and I'm holding Tyrone's hand, right? We're in this big circle. And uh, Tyrone's actually the one that ended up baptizing me. Um, and Tyrone is the one that uh, recorded this song on this tape and sang it at our wedding. And it's amazing. God works in mysterious ways. Uh, and it is just fascinating to me uh, how that very moment, it felt like it was all for me, right? I know it wasn't, but it, it just felt like that was that moment. And I, and I answered the call. I went forward. And it radically changed my life. Um, I, was, I went from an old uh, sinner to a new sinner, right? Uh, I, a clean sinner, weird. Um, but Jesus paid the price, right? And he radically transformed my life to the point that I became a pastor. Um, and it was that moment, that moment that catapulted that. So we've got to remember that. So it's good to go back. It's good to remember those moments that we have because it gets you fired up. I was so fired up. For, the, for God's word. I was telling everybody, now no, not many people were listening, but, uh, but I didn't care. I didn't care what they thought. I was just excited about God. I, I had to relearn how to treat girls, how to treat women. I had to relearn everything because I had such a bad model, right, in this world. But now I started following God. So the second word is restore. Um, I love tinkering with things. Um, I love uh, taking something that's broken, fixing it up. I like working on cars. Uh, I got some cabinets. Somebody was remodeling their, their kitchen. And they're like, hey, you want, you want, anybody want these cabinets? And I was like, yeah, I'll take them. I love these cabinets, you know. And So I took them, I tore them all apart, made them fit my Basin, I have a little kitchenette thing down in my basement. And so I, I redid them. I sanded them all down. I'm still working on it. These are projects, right? <laughs> I don't know. This is like two years in the making, I think. Um, going for three. Uh, drives my wife crazy. I've got so many projects at home. Uh, it's crazy. We had a flood a while back. Um, and, uh, well, several years back. Um, and the bottom step, I had to rip out the carpet, right? still ripped out. Like it's still, so you go carpet, it's all nice. And then wood, you know, and I've got the carpet in the basement. I mean, all I got to do is do the job. Right. Um, and so I've got all these projects and, and actually, oh my gosh. Okay. Aside, I just had a bunny trail, but, uh, uh, I'm into Copar right now. Uh, so you can go and get wrecked cars, right? You bid on them online and then you get them and then you fix them up. That's the ticket. That's next. And uh, this last week I missed, I lost an auction. Oh, so painful, $500 off. Oh. Oh. And that's driving my wife crazy. She hates it, uh, but I love it. Um, so restoring things, I really like it. And I, and I like seeing the transformation from, from what it was to what it can be, right? Uh, and I still remember that it was all broken and that I had a part of fixing that. It's kind of like when I've brought somebody, I've helped somebody come or understand who God is. I get to be a part of that. 
Uh, and, it, and it's so awesome to watch the transformation. Um, camp this year was amazing, amazing. Kids camp, youth camp, we had so many kids getting baptized. Oh my gosh, it was just amazing, one after the other. It reminded me of some biblical you know, story that you've seen and you're just like, thousands of people, no, we didn't have thousands, but thousands of people being brought into the family of God. And it was just so uh, satisfying to see people that are working with kids and students and seeing them, their fruit of their labor, you know, and that it's working, that God is working through the process. So restoring. Uh, Ephesians 2, 1 and 4, 1 through 4, it says this, and you were dead in your trespasses. Now, when he's saying you, he's talking to the Gentiles. Now, this was crazy. This was, this was nuts because Paul comes on the scene and he's now talking to not just the Jews. He's talking to the Gentiles. And he's saying, now you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air and the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Among them who we, right? Now he's telling, talking about us, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. So we're dead, people. Like this passage says, both Jews and Gentiles, you're dead. You're dead in your sin. You have no hope. There's nothing for you. And then here's that transition word, but. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. So it's not your doing. God sent his son for us so that we could receive a free gift. We've done nothing to get it. And that's the definition of grace, right? You take hold of something that you didn't deserve, you shouldn't have, but we get the opportunity to take hold of it. And it's amazing because I don't know if you read the Old Testament, you think of God as this mass crazy God that just wants to wipe out a lot of people, right? Kill a lot of people. But if you really read it, you start to see that God throughout the Old Testament is compassionate. He loves his people. He's chasing after them. He took a guy like David, who's a murderer, adulterer, right? He took a guy like David, and he said, you're a man after my own heart. And he blessed him. He blessed a nation. And so God, there's, there's a lot of times in, with God, yes, he holds everybody accountable. But there are times where he gave a lot of people a pass, and what Jesus has done, not only has he given us an opportunity to have eternity, but that is the expression of God's glory and his compassion that he has for his people. He thought, there is no other way but to kill and to have my son sacrificed on a cross. There's no other way. What greater compassion? Can you imagine that? Doing that with one of your own children, saying there's no other way? There's no other way. So I have to give up my son so that you can have freedom in Christ, so that you can go on and live in eternity. And then in Ephesians 2.10, he says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You see, there's a difference between, I don't know if you've ever been um, uh, convicted of anything, if you've had convictions, right? Um, we, are, we have been prepared 
for this. We've been prepared that we should walk in service to him, in service to God. We, we, were, we were dead, he saved us, and now we are to be obedient. When we say we sacrifice something, we say we have to give up something. When we're obedient, we're being faithful. See, there's a difference. There's a difference between sacrifice and obedience. Uh, and we've got to start walking more in obedience and not see this stuff that we do as a sacrifice. Because I don't, I don't want you to leave this place and go, oh, I feel convicted, so I should do it. And it's like, ugh, if this is what I have to do, right? I guess I have to sacrifice a Seahawks game or, you know, can't watch the Sounders today, which, by the way, uh, soccer is the greatest sport in the world. Um, I just have to say that. I love soccer. I really like soccer. Um, yeah, never mind. Um, I could go on about that, but, um, but this is more important. So, um, so we've got to walk in obedience to those things. Romans 12, 10, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Do not be conformed to this world. There's so much trying to tear us away from what we know to be true. And we've got to get back to God's word. We've got to get back to loving people. We love first. That's our first action. We love people first. All the other stuff, it's whatever. We'll figure it out. But we love first. And then we hold people accountable. And that's okay. We do judge you're judged every day for your actions, right? I mean, God has done in us. So how, do we, how do we see somebody as a Christ follower? We go to Galatians 5, right? We go to Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit, right? The things that we put out, the things that are coming out of us show people who we are. Now, I have gotten way better at this, but just driving alone. Think about how you drive, Okay? Are you reflecting Christ in the way you drive, right? I know, I'm stepping on some toes now, right? Think about that, all right? Um, so, yeah, I'll leave it at there. Um, so where or in what way do you need to restore? In what way do you need to restore so you can get back to what you remember to be the truth? What you remember when you first accepted Christ, when you were in fire for him, when you would do anything, when you would walk in obedience. And now it feels like a sacrifice. So the last thing, the last word is respond. We've got to be willing to respond. And, and um, I, I think uh, convictions, uh, I'm, I'm probably, whenever I've been convicted, um, probably 20% of the time I follow through with those convictions. Um, I don't know if you have ever watched something or heard a song and you thought, oh, I need to whatever, and then you never do, right? And then the next time it comes around, oh my gosh, I've been meaning to, and then you never do, right? Um, and that's okay, right? Maybe it takes a lot, you know? I mean, it takes a lot for me to realize that I shouldn't probably be playing sports. Um, but, but I'll remember this. And I don't ever want to be in this kind of pain ever again in my life. Um, and so I will probably, no, I, no, I will probably still play sports. Um, yeah, it's hard. Um, but there is a passage in the Bible in John, or there's a whole story in the Bible. And, and this is when Jesus, he's getting ready to go to the cross. And he has a last supper with his uh, disciples. And he walks into the room and they're all complaining. They're arguing. They're co actually complaining about who is the goat? Who is the greatest of all time? Michael Jordan. Um, but who is the greatest of all time? And Jesus walks into this. And what does he do? He picks up a towel. And this is what we need to do. We need to pick up a towel when we respond to his calling. And he humbles himself. And he washes their feet. 
And he says this, he said, when we had washed their feet, this is John 13, 12 through 17. We had, we had washed their feet, when he had washed their feet and put on his outer garment and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should also do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is no greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. If you do them. Not if you feel warm and fuzzies about them. Not if you feel convicted a hundred times. But if you do them, if you take a towel and you put it on, you say, I'm ready to serve because I want to walk in obedience to God. This isn't salvational, people. This isn't you're going to hell or heaven, right? This is, this is just obedience to the king, to the master, to the one that we serve because of what he's done for us. And we've got to do it with the right heart. And uh, so the last question is, are you ready to respond? And there's a video that we're going to watch right now of somebody that was ready and accepted the call to respond. Check out the screens. Well, my name's John Bozich. I've been in uh, Washington since 2006, and I've been attending C3 for about seven years now with my family. Been leading a crew for about five or six months now. The reason that I even started to lead the crew or volunteered for it is because Russ had put a video up during one of the Sunday morning services and said that we need help with youth. <laughs> Having raised two children, raising them with good morals and character and integrity, we know that there are a lot of times kids don't have that stability. And even if they do, there's sometimes they just want to talk about stuff they don't want to talk about with their parents, <laughs> which I totally understand because I was the same way. Daniel is one of the first guys that signed up for my crew. And it's been a really good thing because he is younger and to see the things that he's been going through and to understand a little bit about what he's going through. When I first got started in the cruise, there weren't that many people. Sometimes it'd just be me and him. So we would go grab Dairy Queen or something like that. You know, so he, he appreciated that type of stuff that it wasn't just, you gotta sit here and, and talk about the service and we could actually go out and do stuff. One of the most rewarding things about being a crew leader is to have the kids that are younger and that are really just getting going in high school and to be able to, to watch them grow not only uh, in school but also in their faith. And Daniel's been a great disciple because he's been going out there and talking to his cousins and friends and, and he's he's got some of them to come to, to cruise now and to youth group. So I think that's pretty awesome that he's not only. Uh, my name's Daniel Sinuk. I've been attending C3 for about six months. I came here in mid-February. I'm in John's crew. John, he's into his crew. He asks us if, any, if everything's okay and helps us anything that we need. And he prays with us, which I very appreciate. My favorite part would be how I could open up to them and just say anything that is on my heart and anything that I would want to say to someone and they wouldn't judge you for it. On the first night I came to youth, the message helped me feel like I belonged here. Someone showed up to Wednesday night for the first time. I would invite, invite them to a crew and I would show them that this is more than friends, it's a family. Yeah, yeah. That was great. Yeah, and I, and I would say the same thing. I said, this is more than just a, a hangout. This is a family. We're a family. And so this is part of also your discipleship process, right? This is the next step that you would take that you'd say, hey, I want to continue to grow. And being gathered together, this is, this is a step. This is actually a step as well, right? We get to fellowship with one another. And we encourage you to stick around, to, to hang out, to meet some new people. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna jump into worship. But I just I just want to ask you, you know, is this something that that you need to do that you've been thinking about? Is do you need to step up? Do you need to volunteer either inside outside the church or just maybe it's just thinking about like keeping your eyes open 
to seeing the needs out in the community, handing somebody some water or helping somebody change a tire or anything like that, but just being obedient in what the Spirit's leading you to do. So if you would stand with us, we're gonna, we're gonna finish this thing off with some worship. Thank you guys and God bless you. Hey, it was so great to have you this morning at C3 Tri-Cities Online. We want to continue to equip you in your next steps throughout the week and have designed specific material for you that can be found on the C3 Tri-Cities app. This material will help you build and engage in your faith daily with resources available for you. We also would like you to fill out your Connect card so we can know how you're doing throughout the week and that can also be found on the C3 app. Thanks so much for joining us and we hope to see you again next week at C3 Tri-Cities Online.